Yo, what up? It's 929 WDUP, New London's home of timeless hip hop and RB. It's your boy Mike Mitchell. Special guest on the line right now on the check in, man. I got my man Lamborghini in the building, man. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. So, yo, you know, you're not that far away from us, man. You out there currently out there in Norwalk, Connecticut, you know, but you're originally from Nigeria. Talk yeah. about your background and how you actually managed to come out to Connecticut of all places, coming from Africa. <laughs> Yo, first, I want to say thank you for having me here today. You know, um, I really appreciate, you know, the support. Uh, mm-hmm. So basically, um, I was born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. You know, that's where life started for me. And I lived there for several years. Started my music career in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, apart from doing music back at home, you know, I started my prison reform movement. You know, I do a lot of music concerts in prison. I try to use my platform to get freedom for, you know, wrongfully incarcerated men and women, you know. So that is one of the things that I became very known for in the country. And um, some show promoter, you know, um, came to one of my events in Nigeria in the prison, you know, and she and her team decided, you know, to have a concert for me here in Connecticut. You know, and that that's the first thing that ever brought me to America and to to Connecticut. You know, so I came for the concert. Um, that was early 2018 or mid summer 2018, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and during the during that trip, I also because I do a lot for prison reform, um, I also did a concert in Cheshire Correctional Institution. Okay. You know, hey. I don't know if you know Cheshire, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I heard of it. I heard of it, yeah. yeah. Um, Yo, I've um, never been, knock on wood, but yeah, yeah, I heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, know, um, you know, and that's uh, that's how I found myself in Connecticut. I went back home, you know, stayed a little bit back in Nigeria, but then um, I felt like it was time for me to, you know, grow out of that space and, you know, just leave my country mm-hmm. and, you know, see how I can push my career my my brand my prison reform everything about my life you know and at the point is what i was i I met my wife you know but then we're still dating the the love of my life and i almost felt like we are inseparable you know like where else would i rather be um, Mm -hmm. with the woman that i deeply love you know which was a tough decision you know because i never left home before you know so but i think not i think it was the greatest decision of my life because i'm a happy man you know, and my brand is growing, and I'm every day I'm getting to understand America better. Yeah, was it like a huge culture shock for you? You know, coming from Africa, coming to Connecticut, you know, America. You know, what was like some of the biggest challenges trying to adjust from you know being from where you're from and coming out here? Yeah, so it, it's I'm still going through uh, you know that cultural shock. You know, mm-hmm. like um, so even a quick one, I say Connecticut. My wife will say no, it's Connecticut. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> you wife got it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, the, a little bit of those lingua shock is still there. Mm. Um, a little bit of the food, you know. So, like, I started trying to like eat American food, you know. Um, and then I don't know if you know anything about me and my wife, but you know, we started also. Um, we have what we call ling and lamb. I don't know if you've ever. Heard Oh, yeah, no, no. I, I, I did my research. I know about that. I was going to ask you. That's one of my questions coming up. You know, that, that, let's get into it. Let's talk about that. Good. You know, so, like, <laughs> in the midst of all of this, you know, um, the Linga Lamb brand has also helped me, you know, in adjusting into the American system, you know, the food, because we do a lot of food experiments, and I, you know, I try to eat as much as I can, you know. So, it's been a beautiful ride, you know, mostly because I feel like, at every point in time in every human being's life, you know, um, just step out of your comfort zone because you never know what is out there waiting for you, you know, but just try, you know. Yeah. So I used, I was worried before I moved to America, but mm. I tell you, it is the greatest decision of my life, you know, and I'm, I'm happy I'm here. Yeah. Uh, we have you over here too, man. So, yo, let's talk about like, the difference with the music industries, you know, we, we interviewed a lot of people, you know, from Nigeria, you know, big up Richard Dean, my homie, Grunge Cake, what's up? So yeah, so, you know, a lot of artists come out there. Like, what's your thoughts on them, um, you know, the music game out there for where you're from and in comparison to out here? So that's a very good question. You know, 
one of the things that America has and we don't have is structure. Mm. You know, um, there are a lot of Nigerian and African artists that their records have been streamed for free. You know, we're talking about hundreds and billions of streams within Africa. You yeah. Know, no royalty. You know, mm -hmm. so you see, even the musicians, you know, musicians that played keyboard or backing vocals or played the bass in a big record, you know, apart from that little money or whatever payment they paid them in the studio right there for just playing, they don't have royalties, even if the record becomes the biggest in the world. You don't know, got royalties? No royalty. No, no. You know, who's, con who's, who's controlling it over there? Like, who's like calling the shots where like, right, artists not, are, are getting royalties? You know me over there. That is part of the structural problem Nigeria has when it comes yeah. to the music industry because the government mm -hmm. is supposed to be the regulating body. You know, the government is supposed to help ensure and enforce some of these, you know, um, institutions. So we have institutional problems because mostly in the music space in Africa, and in Nigeria particularly, you have more individual big names. Mm -hmm. you know, but we don't have a controlled body system, you know, that a proper institution that musicians can trust that regardless, I know I will get my money. I know I will get my royalties, you know, after putting my effort in this record. So that is one big difference from America. Mm -hmm. In America, if your song is played in the mall, you're getting royalties. If your yeah. song is played uh, 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 in the elevator, you're getting royalties from that building. BMI is, uh, what, ASCAL, you know, like... ASCAP, BMI, yeah, yep. There is a distribution, mm -hmm. you know. Um, now the streaming culture is changing things. Right? Yeah, that's sound exchange. Yeah, so yeah, they're on top of that too, yep. You know. Um, and I see now, you know, you now have um, Spotify Nigeria, Apple Nigeria, you know, like these brands are beginning to understand. But again, when it comes to that structure, you know, treating and knowing that this is a multi-billion dollar industry, you know, that is the, that is where Nigeria is not yet at. And it's, um, we're gradually getting there, you know, but until we, we solidify the institutions, that can regulate policies to ensure that you know nobody's uh, uh, intellectual property is taken for granted. You know, be you a songwriter, be you a bassist, a keyboardist, whatever role you play. You know, how do we ensure that they are well compensated? So when I think about things like that, I see the big difference between you know music industry in Nigeria and music industry here in America. You know, so like. Um, like I don't like America. America is so well structured. You know, you mm -hmm. can, you can, you know, they will take you to court. You know, if yeah. you mess people's record, you will be sued right immediately. You know, oh, so on there. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I pray and I hope that we will get to that level. Like mm -hmm. I tell people, there are people in America that made made it just because they were songwriters. Yeah. They didn't have to go to the studio and record the song themselves. You know. I heard the same thing. I heard the same thing. So yeah, I heard about that, man. So let's talk about you. Um, your new album coming out. It's Food out. is ready. Talk yeah. about oh, it was out already. Okay, my, my mistake. My bad, bro. Yeah. yeah. So you talk about your album. Talk about your, your project. You know, give some details about it. Yeah. So food, food is out. food is ready is a special album to me. Um, and that is because it started off as um, I just, me just living my life. You know, um, myself and my wife through the the platform we created Ninja Land, you know, we became um, we became globally um, appreciated, you know, from what we call our Ninja Land fan. You know, we don't like to use the word fans. Mm -hmm. You know, um, our social media platform grew so, you know, so quickly, so huge. You know, people love us. Currently on TikTok, we're like we have we're two point two million followers on TikTok, um, and on TikTok currently we are. We just surpassed about 350 million views, you know, mm. uh, on TikTok, you know, and YouTube as well, you know, so, and people love us because we, we eat food, we experiment with food, lifestyle, we're 
you know, we try to, no, we're here, we're just living our lives, you know, so mm -hmm. you can't really say, oh, are we a prank couple or no, we just love to eat food. Now, being a musician, I have two body of work recorded that I wanted to put out, but none of those body of work was interpreting my current state of mind. And my current state of mind is I am a happy man, just enjoying all this food from different cultures and different parts of America. So I told myself, I said, no, I'm going to call my album Food is Ready, you know, yeah. where I'm going to do songs about, like, I have a record on the album called Chick-fil-A. I have a record called Rice and Beans because I tried a Jamaican food, you know. I have yeah. a song called Sapase from it because I tried the, the, I don't know if you know this, Black Rice from mm -hmm. Haiti. You know, there is this Haitian restaurant in, in Bridgeport, you know, where I get that food from. So, like, and there's a song called Filipino Bangu Speech because there is another Filipino restaurant in Norwalk that, you know, I my wife took me there to try some Filipino fish for the first time and I lost my mind. So, like, it's a reflection of all that. Then you have India has done me well, you know. Yeah. Because that is my first time trying an Indian dish and literally, it's a restaurant here in Norwalk. So part of what we do is we know God has blessed us with a huge following. And our, our followers love and respect everything we put out, you know. So we try to support, like, local businesses, you know. So, like, we've been yeah. supporting a lot of local restaurants in, in Connecticut, you know. So yeah. um, it was a no-brainer for me to call the album Food is Ready. And what we also want to do with that is, you know, Part of the proceeds from the album and our the people that love our brand, myself and my wife, we're trying to feed one million people on the streets, you know, across the world. And already, yeah, what's, your, what's your game plan for that? You know, feeding a million people that's a small nation right there. Like, how do you go about doing that? So, already we started in Uganda, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then we're activating in Nigeria this weekend. I'm sorry, next weekend, we're, we're activating in Ghana. So, what we want to do is we want to just feed like 500, 1,000, you know, people here and there, like in different countries across the world. Mm -hmm. And part of the ways we want to achieve that, we're open to partnership with other organizations, soup kitchens, um, even encouraging, you know, our followers to even feed people on our behalf. So, for example, if you get on the Food is Ready Challenge, you can say, hey, I'm in, um, I'm in, a, I'm in a bridge park. I can feed 20 people on your behalf, you know, I, I, it's on me, you know, and then that, that's part of it. So by the time we put all those numbers together, we believe between now and the first um, quarter of next year, we should have fed 1 million people. So we're, we, the journey has just begun. Yeah. Let's talk about some of your activism, you know, you know, you're like strong on prison reform, you know, talk about some of your work in that aspect. So, you know, prison reform, is something very special and dear to my heart, you know, as a young boy, because I grew up in the ghetto, you know, like when I say the ghetto, ghetto of Nigeria, you know. And that's another question, like, yo, what's the what's the difference? I don't know if you've been to ghetto in America yet, but like, yo, what's the difference between the ghetto, Nigeria, ghetto of America? Like, yo, you know, like if you experience the ghetto in, uh, you know, America, but like, yo, talk about some of that, you know, back in Nigeria, how tough it might be being in the ghetto in Nigeria. Like the ghetto in Nigeria, because again, because what you guys refer to as ghetto here is mm. mostly like the projects, right? Yeah. Um, those are still beautiful buildings, you know. Those are still they still have electricity, you know. Um, they 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 still have grocery stores. They still have good road into the place. Um, they probably have hot water. In the in the in their bathroom, you know. So mm -hmm. when we say ghetto, like ghetto ghetto in Nigeria, first and foremost, most of the ghettos, ninety point nine percent of the ghettos, ninety point ninety nine actually, don't even have electricity. You know, a lot of them have to survive on generators here and there. You know, a lot of them don't even have good roads. You know, into the into the place. You know, so when we say you can't even compare. A, a proper ghetto in Nigeria to any ghetto in America. What, what I've seen so far in America is, yes, I see some communities are very dirty. You know, you see bags all over the place. It's, it's dirty. But yeah. 
if that community comes together and clean it up, they're going to have a clean road. They're mm. going to have a smooth environment, right? Even if we come together and clean the ghetto in Nigeria, there is no good road still. Damn. You, you see what I mean? So yeah. Like, it's night and day. You can't compare, you know. And that's part of what inspired my prison reform because as a young boy back in Nigeria, I felt like I don't want to just complain about what the government is not doing. I just want to wake up every day and know that I did something to help make the world a better place, you know? So um, I stopped pointing fingers and I started doing something, you know? So nobody, not a single Nigerian entertainer was talking about the prison. Nobody was talking about how congested it was. Nobody was talking about how boys, girls were locked up for several years. You know, like it's, it's a very political country and you have to be careful how you talk about some of these things, you know, but I was young and I was very bold, you know, so being a musician, I knew that I had an opportunity that a regular young person does not have. I had friends on the radio. I had friends on TV. The media would always write about anything I'm doing. So I decided to take advantage of that power that I had. I started organizing concerts in prison. You know, so I started off going to the prison, having a concert, get food, get clothes, you know, feed the inmates. We're talking about thousands of inmates, all right? And when I started, it, I, just, I was just doing concerts. I'm like, let me just uplift their spirit. But one day, a young boy stopped me while I was in the prison and said, Lamborghini, help me. I'm not a criminal. I was walking down the road. The police picked me up and my family don't even know I'm in here. Bro, see, I'm having goosebumps just remembering that boy right now. You know, like yeah. I lost peace. I said, no, I have to help this boy. You know, yeah. how can, because this is not, this is, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be normal. You know, so that was when I got into full advocacy. You know, that was yeah. when I started fighting for like, boys that are locked up in jail with nobody, you know, um, to mm. help them. So I started raising funds, you know, through my platform and we would just go to the court. I got lawyers and we started paying bills and getting freedom for young men that are locked up in jail, you know? So in Nigeria, I've got freedom for, I've gotten freedom for over 130 inmates. I'm not bad. So it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. You know, yeah. in Nigeria, I've gotten freedom for over 130 inmates, you know? Really? Um, through, through my platform, you know. So in America, because I, I moved out of Nigeria, I've also started like going to prisons in America, you know. So before the pandemic, I visited Cheshire again, I visited Rikers, I visited um um uh, I think four correctional between DC and Maryland. Uh -huh. So it's it's something I'm extremely passionate about, you know, and my ultimate goal in the future is to be able to build halfway houses you know mm -hmm. in Nigeria because that is not something we're used to you know yeah. but i pray that god blesses me enough to build a halfway house where we can truly reform most of these men before reintegrating them back into the society yeah no that's a noble cause man i respect you on that man salute on that thank you yeah yeah so you know so your album for a minute though like and how talented is it you know the album's called food is ready you know you kind of implement you know what you're about, and then, like, you know, it still got sound good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, if you yeah. want to be a good project. Like, what was the biggest challenge with that? With that? So I can't wait for you to listen to the songs, because these are songs that just were inspired from my food adventure with my wife, but at the same time, I've got real producers, good producers, to make sure the sound is good, you know, right. to make sure that the record is hot, you know. So, um, sincerely, the way I, I see music now is, I see music as fashion uh, you know you wait or i see music as food you wake up today you feel like eating uh burritos or you feel like eating rice or you feel like eating chicken you should go for it you know yeah I'm, i've gotten to the point in my life where i don't want my music to be in a box anymore like oh ah. you have to be a, a hip-hop artist or you have to be just only afro no it's music it's a universal language and i'm speaking that language right now so when you play, you're gonna play three songs. Three records, yeah, yeah. We're gonna let three three records fly. 
So yeah, we got the, the India record, Thankful and Banger. We're gonna play those like consecutively. Those so. are three different sounds. When you yeah. play those records, you will understand what I mean by, you know, I, I created this album just exactly the way I was feeling and each record represents something totally different. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk about your past bodies of work. You know, it sounds like you've been at it for a long time. You know, like if anybody wanna like, anybody listening, who's not up on Lamborghini, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they want to check their past, your past work, you know what I'm saying? So like, yo, give everybody your info about how they can check that out. Well, so my past body of work, I've written a couple of singles. I dropped an album called Salt. My mm -hmm. first music album was Salt, where I featured a lot of top, you know, Nigerian artists as well. I have um, Olamide, who is one of the biggest African artists right now. You know, I have him on the album. I have Peter from P-Square you know, on the album. I had um, Small Doctor, I had DJ Jimmy Jack, who is a, is, is a legendary DJ, you know, one of the biggest DJs out of Nigeria. You know, um, I have a record with um, with Mike Karemu. He's one of the biggest saxophonists in Africa, you know, because he's the first African saxophonist to, you know, collaborate with Kenny G, you know, so. Oh, that's crazy, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's really, really, so I had a lot of big names on the first album, you know, and, um, um, from Ghana, I have a record with Stoneboy, you know, um, and then from Jamaica, I had something with Elephant Man, you know. So oh, like, I hear that name in a minute. Wait, yo, how Elephant Man doing, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great, you know. I didn't yo, know he's record. popping in the early 2000s, yo. He's crazy out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah, me, I, I, I've been around doing my thing, you know. Yeah. But it's just different now because um, Ling and Lamb, you know, has blown us up to the world. So now I have more people from across the globe, you mm -hmm. know, showing interest in my sound and in my music, you know, which is which is a great blessing, you know. So like, if you check out Lamborghini on Spotify, on Apple Music, on Pandora, or even if you say, Alexa, play me thankful by Lamborghini, you know, you can check me out everywhere, you know. So like, yeah. I'm grateful that people can find me everywhere. And um, the journey has just started, you know, we're growing. Yo, what made you choose, choose the name Lamborghini, though? I mean, it's obvious, but I'm saying, is there more, is is more, like, significance to it? Or he's just like, yo, I just like Lambos. I got me one, you know what I mean? Like, is there any deeper meaning to it? It's, it came as a funny name from my dad, you know? Okay. Like, I was young. My dad was a marine engineer, traveled a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, one of the days he came back from one of the trips, you know, and I was, I was just all over him. So in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. you, parents have ways of keeping you busy just so that they can have in their own time you know so yeah. my dad sent me to do like different things around the house just so that he can have time but i finished those things in two seconds you okay know? And, I, and i came back because i wanted to spend time with him so he yeah. was like that was fast are you a lamborghini you know and okay everybody, everybody started laughing you know my my siblings and everybody started calling me Lambo, Lambo, Lambo around the house. But yeah. when I lost my dad, you know, when I lost my dad, that name meant something totally different to me because it, it reminds me of the, the memory, the moments that I shared, you know, with him, you know. So it was a no-brainer that I was going to make that my permanent, you know. In fact, when I lost my dad, I went back and I made the name official. So it became part of my official names, you mm. know, because that's... um something special you know you know that i shared with him you know so that's uh that's where the name came from it came from just playing around in the house but now it means something totally different to me no nah, that's absolutely dope bro so um while i queue up your records you know what i mean give everybody your, your info how they can check your records out i'm gonna queue up the india record and we're gonna do a three uh a triple we're gonna three it you know what i'm saying yeah. thankful banger we're gonna play all three records yeah. you know what i mean give everybody info while i queue the record up yeah, so you can find me on Instagram as Lamborghini, you know, L-A-M-B-O-G-I-N-N-Y. You can find me on um, on YouTube as Lamborghini, L-A-M-B-O-G-I-N-N-Y. And if you want to laugh and enjoy, you know, have fun with my, myself and my wife, you can find us on TikTok at Ling and Lamb. That's L-I-N-G-A-N-D-L-A-M-B. You know, um, that's our name, Ling and Lamb on, on Instagram, Ling and Lamb on TikTok, Ling and Lamb on YouTube. You know, you can find us and, you know, enjoy the family and, be, and, and you know, and on, on Spotify, Apple, um, Pandora, uh, Amazon Music, um, 
till the you know i'm all over all on all streaming platforms just type in lamborghini and you'll find my record big dog is out here on all platforms please respect them you know what i'm saying <laughs> Word, man. so Thank your you label matter of fact i want you to talk a little talk real quick you know i mean playing chess real quick man you want to talk some it's about the album real quick before we wrap it up man so you get to your records like yo i'm lambo i'm like that you know what i'm saying <laughs> then you want to stay real quick you know what I'm saying? Yo, well, Guan, yo, this is your homeboy Lamborghini, and right now you're about to listen to Food Is Ready album. Three songs back to back. India has done me well, thankful, and banger. Repeat. Banger. <laughs> On 92.9 FM. <laughs> Let it roll. <laughs>